All right, today I'm going to tell you guys how I like to e-scout for elk using Onyx Maps. I know it's almost September already, so most of you have already drawn your tags for the most part. You probably know which units you're going to be hunting. Maybe you've already narrowed down access points and know how you're going to get into those units. So today, for the purposes of time, what I wanted to focus on was primarily terrain features and how I like to narrow down a specific area with any unit that I think will have the highest probability of holding elk. I know everybody's got their own style of hunting, so based on my experiences and how I like to hunt, these are the terrain features that I like to look for. North facing slopes, benches, saddles, finger ridges, food and water, unobscured glassing points, and if there are any burn areas within the unit. All right, so I've already narrowed down a specific area here. It's some nice broken country, a lot of north facing slopes, a lot of open hillsides, a lot of open ridges, um, creates a lot of edge habitat and just seems to lend itself really nicely for glassing opportunities. So I've pre-marked a couple waypoints. They're all within one particular head basin here. And the first thing that I'm going to do is navigate over here to this button that says Satellite 2D. Click on that and change it from 2D to map to 3D map. Now after I close this tab, I like to rotate the map so that I'm looking from the north to the south. This helps me very quickly identify north facing slopes. As I start to break down my waypoints here, I'm going to have my screen oriented in a number of different directions, but that's kind of the nice thing about 3D mapping is that I can literally toggle this thing in any direction and have viewpoints from ridge lines, side hills, creek bottoms. It's almost the next best thing compared to actual boots on the ground when it comes to e-scouting. As I zoom into my first waypoint here, you'll notice that I'm not marking specific terrain features individually. I'm typically marking a glassing point that'll give me the best ability to view multiple terrain features from one location. So let's break down why I chose my first waypoint. First off, you'll probably notice that it's located on an open ridge line with unobscured views for glassing. Unobscured meaning I should be able to glass multiple angles without any vegetation blocking my line of sight. For viewing purposes, it's sometimes easier to glass on south-facing slopes due to less vegetation growing. One huge benefit to this location is that I can basically see 360 degrees and cover a ton of country. However, the main reason that I chose this spot was to focus in this direction. The most obvious terrain features I notice here immediately are the three finger ridges in close proximity. What's also nice about these ridges is that they're fairly open. Bulls like to be able to have a vantage point as they work down towards water or other elk. If I go ahead and pull up my base maps again here, I can turn on the hybrid layer and verify that there's water in close proximity to all these finger ridges as well. With this many ravines converging in one spot, I'm willing to bet that there's some water seeps and wallows down in these cool north facing bottoms. The contour lines can also be a good indicator of flat spots that might retain water better for wallow locations. If I zoom back out, you can see the contour lines also allow you to pick out benches easier. Another new feature that Onyx now has that's extremely helpful for identifying steepness of an area is the slope angle layer. Look how easy these benches and possible water retaining areas stand out now. If I turn down the transparency of the slope angle layer, the benches that are heavily timbered are easier to identify. These are the areas that I would expect elk might be bedding on. If I go ahead and turn off the slope angle layer and zoom into the middle ridge and the hillside to the east, you'll notice a small fire must have went through an area of this drainage. It's hard to tell exactly, but the trees appear to be dead based on the brown color and the matchstick timber laying about. Burns and beetle kill areas can be great for understory regeneration. The young new vegetation growth that's generated by more sunlight is a great food source for deer and elk. So to summarize the train features we identified near our first waypoint, we have finger ridges, water, benches on north facing slopes for bedding, possible burn areas which may provide food or forage, and to me, the icing on the cake with this waypoint is the fact that we can view the entire area from a glassing point that allows us to observe elk without being detected. Now, if we transition just up the hill, you'll notice my second marked waypoint. When I get over to this layer and turn the hybrid layer back on, 
I see three different terrain features that jump out pretty quick. I have a spring located at a pretty high elevation. I see two saddles and I see a nice bench located just over the saddle on a north facing slope. I also notice some lush green grass pockets just above the spring here. This tells me there's probably water even higher than the spring. If I zoom out just a little bit and turn on the slope angle layer again, the north facing bench really stands out. <clears throat> You can also notice some pretty gentle slopes on the other side of the spring on that north facing slope. I feel like sometimes it can be hard to narrow down bedding areas, but this spot looks particularly appealing to me because of the bench on the north facing slope that's relatively close to water. It's got multiple saddles right there, and it looks like the elk have basically four basins that they can travel between within relatively short proximity. So it just looks like an area that they would feel safe. They've got multiple escape routes and it's high elevation with water next to what looks like awesome bedding. I wanted to show you guys a couple of other tools before I leave this location. I want to talk about waypoint radius and terrain exaggeration tools. I originally had my waypoint positioned right in the middle of the saddle underneath where it says 840 feet on the map. If I was actually hunting this area, I would probably start by observing the area from the closer waypoint that I have marked here. From this ridge line, I would be able to make observations before marching right into the middle of the spot. If you remember from earlier, we also marked the area right in front of this waypoint as possible bedding. This is another area I would keep my eye on. Once I figure out how the elk are using the area, I would then formulate my plan of attack. So as an example, let's pretend that elk are feeding out of the first area we identified as possible bedding, heading over the saddle and down to the water we identified. If it's early in the evening and the thermals are still headed up the mountain, you could probably head down the ridge line to get closer. If thermals are already heading down, just be mindful of that when you're moving in. For the purposes of demonstrating the waypoint radius tool, let's assume we are rifle hunting for this example and we move to the waypoint on the screen. If you click on the waypoint and hit the waypoint radius tool, you can enter in the yardage or mileage radius. Let's say your maximum shooting range is 500 yards. Enter that into the blank field box and hit apply. This shows you your effective shooting range from that location. This tool also has many other uses. You could identify a five mile buffer area from a trailhead. You could use it to glass up a bedded animal in thick timber, range it, then use the radius tool from your current location to pinpoint that animal's location on the map and navigate to within your desired distance of that location or you could use it in the same manner to mark the distance you shot an animal. This would allow you to navigate to the spot you should expect to find first blood. Another useful tool is the terrain exaggeration feature. This has a more beneficial use when looking at less steep terrain like rolling hills. It allows you to exaggerate the terrain steepness in order to find less obvious spots where contour maps and 3D imagery can be hard to decipher. So I think this is a good stopping point for this video. I didn't want it to get too long or too overwhelming.